Hey guys, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have my Medievalathon and May TBR. So I do have some books already picked out for the Medievalathon, which is taking place from May 1st through May 31st, and I will definitely be talking about those. However, I've also been doing the 52 reading challenges this year. Um, these we received in the Shelf Love Crate Advent Calendar in December, and I've been picking out about four to five for every month, so I will be doing randomly picking out, I think I'm going to do four cards this month, and fulfilling the prompts with books. I'm going to attempt to put the Medievalathon books that I've already picked out into a prompt, but if that doesn't happen, that's okay. So we're actually going to start with these so I can see if I can fit any of those books in here, but otherwise stay tuned even if I can't because we are going to go over that as well. So I'm just going to shuffle these up a little bit. And the first one we have here is to read a book with a murder. So. I don't know for sure if this is a murder, but there is some sort of tragedy that happened at a summer camp when our main character was younger. And I'm going to sort of assume, because it's a thriller, Riley Sager, I've only read Final Girls by Riley Sager, but um, that one obviously had some murder in it as well. I'm going to assume that this has some murder in it. If I'm wrong, I will figure out that later in May, but I'm going to be going with this one for now. Okay, let's grab another one. This one is read a one word title book. One word title book. That sounds a little bit weird to me, but it's to read a book that has only one word for the title. And for that, I'm going to be going with Charming by Elliot James. This is a book that I have mentioned in a recent tag video. I believe it was the Stay at Home book tag. I will leave it linked down below so you guys can check that out. And I've had this on my shelf for, I want, oh, I want to say it was probably at least four years. It's been a while. And all I really know about it, it's an adult fantasy, potentially urban fantasy. Um, about John Charming, who isn't your average prince. Um, it talks about Knights Templar and Dragon Slayers and Witch Finders, but this is set in the modern day, and John tends bar under an assumed name in rural Virginia and leads a peaceful, quiet life that is until a vampire and a blonde walk into his bar. Now, this is a series as well um, that has... I could be wrong, but I want to say at least five or six books. Um, so if I like this, it's going to make me want to read the rest of the series. Um, but I've been meaning to get to this for years, so this will be perfect. And now we have read a book with another book on the cover. Ooh, okay. This will be interesting. I have to take a look and see what I actually have on my shelves. Okay, so I found two almost right away. And we have Autobiography by Christina Lauren and The Book Jumper by... I feel really bad that I don't know how to pronounce that. So this one is a YA contemporary about a bisexual boy and I think he has a crush on a Mormon boy. I don't know much else. It is LGBTQ. And I've heard really, really good things about this one. And then this is a fantasy, magical realism, fantabulism book about a girl who can jump into stories. Now, I know this one has at least a sequel, whereas Autobiography is a standalone. And I think because of that, I think I might be going with autobiography for this month just because again if I like this I'm gonna want the sequel and I'm gonna try not to buy too many books this month so this one should be a good option and then our last one for this month is to read a book released in the same month you were born so my birthday is in January so I need to find a book that was released in January um, and I think we're going to have to enlist Goodreads for this. 
Okay, so again, I have a couple different options here. I believe these actually both came out January of 2018. I had a couple that I think were from 2019 um, and probably, I don't actually don't know if I have any from 2020 yet. Um, but these were the ones that popped out at me um, when I was going through my list. And these are both pretty dark from what I remember. Um, the fandom, even just the cover says, no story is worth dying for. And on the back, we have exactly one week from today, I will hang. I will hang for my friends, my family, and above all else, love. So I know that this is some sort of dark fandom-y story. Our main character is going to a Comic-Con, cosplaying as somebody from her favorite book series, and something happens where I think she is put into that book series like it's real life, and her character is supposed to hang, I'm assuming. I don't know much else, but it is something that... I've had for a little while like I bought this the month it came out and I am a little bit intrigued about it right now just because of the fact that it's dark but it's a YA fantasy-ish sort of thing so we'll see and then this one The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor is an adult horror I'm pretty sure um, this is the UK paperback edition that I bought on my honeymoon with my husband um, around when did we go? Like August, July of 2018. So yeah, this is also one that I've had for a little while. Um, but this one is about a group of characters who when they were boys, I believe, used to draw chalk men um, for whatever reason. And then one of the chalk men drawings led them to a dead body. But then the Chalkmen also started appearing by themselves without them drawing it. Um, yeah, none of us ever agreed on the exact beginning. Was it when we started drawing the Chalk figures or when they started to appear on their own? Was it the terrible accident or when we found the first body? Hmm. How many pages do we have here? After the acknowledgments. 37, 337. This one. 380, 390, 390 something. So this is closer to 400. And I think, I, I mean, both of my options last time were young adult books, but I think, I think we're gonna go with the adult horror. Okay, and so those are all of the prompts for the 52 reading challenges that I'm going to complete in the month of May. So now we are going to jump into the medievalathon part of the TBR. So obviously I have to read at least four books this month. And we have a sort of tier ranking system for Medievalathon, which was created by Holly from Holly Hearts Books. I will leave all of her stuff linked down below as well. And so based on just these four books, I should be able to get to the noble ranking this month. But we also have other prompts that give us like clothes, weapons, an animal companion. And I did pick out one book for each of those. So for the first one for the outfit, I'm going for this like legging outfit here and for that one I needed to pick a book that has my favorite color on the spine and for that one we actually were going to be using The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager because it has a it's like a navy blue spine um it's actually a little easier to see in camera right now than it is in person I had to hold it up to like a book with a black spine to double check because a really dark rich navy blue is like my favorite so we will be using this one then we're going to be moving on to weapons and for that I went with the bow and arrow which means I have to read a romance. Now I know autobiography is a romance however I had already picked one out and so for that one we're going to be going with For the Record by Charlotte Huang. This one is a YA musician contemporary but I do believe there is a romance in here as well. One interesting thing to me personally is that the main character's name is Chelsea and I never see that in a book so I've had this on my shelf for a while and I just really really wanted to get to it when I knew I had to find a romance so this is the one we're going with. And then lastly for the animal companion I wanted to go with a cat because cats are my favorite and so I have to read a book that starts with C and for that one we actually had picked Charming for that as well because Charming starts with C so I'm very glad I was able to fit two out of the three into my 52 reading challenges prompts so so I actually have a total of five books that I have to read for my TBR for May now 
I have talked about my husband on this channel a few times and he does read. However, he normally reads in Chinese on his phone and the books that he reads, I don't know what kind of website they're on, but they are pretty much like sort of like self-published online epic, epic, epic fantasies or sci-fis um, that are all in Chinese. And so some of those books will take him months to read because of how freaking long they are. But he thought it would be fun to join Medievalathon as well. So we actually picked out some books that I own that he has not read yet for him to join us. So we're actually going to go back to clothes for him. He originally wanted the armor one where you have to find a dragon on the cover and I basically have nothing with a dragon on the cover that we could find that also interested him. So he's going with the green outfit. So he is going for a book that has green on the cover. And for that one, he's going to read volume one of Young Avengers. This is Style Over Substance by Kieran Gillen. I've read all three volumes in this series and really, really enjoyed them. I love the art style and he knows some stuff about the original Avengers, so we'll see what he thinks about the Young Avengers. Then for his weapons, he wanted the sword, which means we need something pointy on the cover. And so he's going to be going with Saga Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. So our something pointy on the cover is a sword that Marco has. However, I also think the horns could probably work. He has read the first few volumes of Saga already. We think it was probably around volume three or four, but it has been so long that he's actually planning on restarting and potentially reading more into the series this month as well. So we will see about that, but this is his something pointy on the cover. And then because he has the sword, he also wants the shield, so he needs to read a book that he has high expectations for. And for that, he went with Jinji Ito's Cat Diary, Yan and Mu. So this is a short manga about Junji Ito's cats. We both have a love of Junji Ito's work, but also cats. We own five of them. So um, he is having some high expectations for this, mostly just for the cutesy family cat thing, but then also the Junji Ito typical horror type of art style. Um, and I did enjoy this as well, so I'm hoping he does like it. And then last but not least, we have the Animal Companion. Now this one, he took a while to sort of decide what he wanted to go with. And I might have nudged him in this direction just a little bit because there is a book that I've been telling him to read for a while now. And I think we're finally going to make him do it. So he is going for the fox so that he has to read something with orange on the cover. And we're gonna make him read Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I absolutely love this one. And while it is very, very thick, and it's definitely not in the language he prefers to read, I feel like the way that this book is put together with the text messages and emails and transcripts of the like security footage, it should be pretty quick to get through. I know I read this very, very quickly. And if he really, really wants, we could always try the audiobook of this as well, because I've heard it's amazing. So yes, this is his big, big book for this month, but I'm very excited to see what he thinks about it. And then that is everything for May. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos. I have videos up Mondays and Thursdays. So I will see you then. Bye.